My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served with fire. Hello, this is episode number 41 of the 120 Days to Jam Chemistry with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall look at how to calculate percentage purity. Anytime you hear calculate the percentage purity, know that we are talking about acid base reaction. In some questions, you will be required to calculate molar mass. Remember, when it comes to acid base titration or acid base reaction, concentration in moles per dm cube is equal to concentration in grams per dm cube divided by molar mass. And molar mass will simply be concentrations, concentration in grams per dm cube divided by concentration in moles per dm cube. And we did a lot on that oil on concentration when we are dealing with solubility. Combining all we've done so far, you should be able to find molar mass in acid-based titration and other things you will be asked. And make sure you understand stoichiometry. The stoichiometry class is so so important because many chemistry questions under volumetric analysis will require your knowledge of stoichiometry. Please make sure you watch all these videos over and over and over again. If you do that, you are going to score very, very high. And make sure you get the Flash Learner's Jam application and begin to practice. With only the app, a lot of students scored very, very high last year. I am not a fan of screenshots or evidence or whatever. But if you look at some of the comment section, you will see a lot of persons appreciating the videos and the app. If you can watch them, every year, I have candidates scoring above 300. It's not about bragging. And this jam, I was also have many candidates scoring above 300. I won't still post it or share because it doesn't make any change. My aim is to teach you to understand, not to impress you or show you that I know it or show you what I've achieved. Now, like I said, when you hear calculate percentage purity, something should tell you that we are dealing with acid-base reaction. And in acid-base reaction, there are things you must get or there are things that should be available. We must know the concentration of the acid. We must also know concentration of the base. We must know the volume of acid. We must know the volume of base. We must also know the number of moles of the acid and the number of moles of the base. In some cases, or especially in jam, you will be given the equation of reaction. From there, you will know the number of moles of acid and the number of moles of base. But sometimes, you will not be given. In this question, you are not given the equation of reaction. It is very easy for you to bring out the equation of reaction. You simply bring out the acid and base, then you form the salt and water. From there, you will know the number of moles of acid and the number of moles of base. And don't forget what we learned under um, balancing of equation. In stoichiometry, we did balancing of equation, and I taught you how to know when an equation is balanced. Then under oxidation and reduction, which is redox reaction, we, did, uh, we dealt with how to calculate oxidation number and how to name inorganic compounds. Like in this case, you can see tetraozo sulfate cis. From here, you know what it will be like, and you know how to confirm whether it is tetra or sulfate cis. Back to the topic, percentage purity. Percentage purity is simply concentration of pure substance in grams per dm cube over concentration of impure substance in grams per dm cube times 100. Percentage purity is simply pure over impure times 100. In terms of mass, 
The stated purity is mass, mass of pure substance over mass of impure substance times 100. And if you have your percentage, impu percentage purity and asked to look for percentage impurity, percentage impurity will simply be 100 minus percentage purity. All these will make sense very, very soon. Now look at this question. 25 cm cube of a solution containing 2.5 grams of impure sodium hydroxide pellets per 600 cm cube. 2.5 grams of impure sodium hydroxide pellets per 600 cm cube required 20 cm cube of 0 0.05 big M tetra cis acid for complete neutralization. I told you that M stands for concentration, big M, and it means moles per cm cube. And this 0.05 M is the concentration of tetra cis acid. We are even told acid. So the concentration of the acid is 0.05 moles per cm cube. This is in cm cube. And we are told that 20 cm cube of 0.05 moles per dm cube tetra cis acid. Therefore, the volume of the acid is 20 cm cube. 20 cm cube. Now look at this. 25 cm cube of solution containing 2.5 grams of impure sodium hydroxide pellets per 600 cm cube. The first thing we are taking from that line is volume of base to be 25 cm cube. The second thing you should take is that we have 2.5 grams of impure sodium hydroxide pellets per 600 cm cube. 2.5 per 600 cm cube. When it comes to concentration or even solubility, we don't look at per anything cm cube apart from dm cube, either 1 dm cube or 1000 cm cube. If we have 2.5 grams of impure sodium hydroxide pellets per 600 cm cube, we need to change it to a molar solution, that is in 1000 cm cube or 1 dm cube. How do you do that? We say that since we have 2.5 grams of impure sodium hydroxide pellets per 600 cm cube, it implies that S grams, this grams per cm cube, S grams will be required per 1000 cm cube. If 2.5 grams is needed for 600 cm cube, and we need it to be standard, 1000 cm cube or 1 dm cube, we say let S grams give us 1000 cm cube. Cross multiplying 2.5 times 1,000 over 600 is equals S grams. Therefore, S will be equals dash. And what is exactly this S? And what is 4.2 grams per cm cube? It is simply the concentration of the impure sodium hydroxide pellet in grams per cm cube. Because the concentration, this is the mass, and this is the volume. So the mass of our volume is per 600 cm cube, we need to make it per 1000 cm cube or per 1 dm cube. And we said that if 2.5 grams is 600 cm cube, therefore S grams will, it will be 1000 cm cube and S give us 4.2. This is the concentration of impure sodium hydroxide pellets. What next? We are not given this volume of base is 25 cm cube. We are not given the concentration of base. How about the number of moles of acid and base? We don't have that yet since we are not given the balance equation. We therefore need to create the equation. Now, from here, we already know that H2SO4 reacts with NaOH. So, the equation of the reaction will be the acid H2SO4 plus the base. NaOH will give us, there must be water, H2O. So, 
Let's say you remove water from here. Water will simply be H2 and O. Right? Then this will be salt, sodium salt. That is Na2SO4. This is the salt that will be produced. From here, Na2 simply means here will be 2. If here is 2, oxygen is 2, hydrogen is 2. And here, hydrogen is 2. Let's increase here. Let's see if this is balanced. Here we have 2 hydrogen. Here we have 2 hydrogen. A total of 4 hydrogen in the reactant side. So that is 2 times 2, 4. Hydrogen is balanced. Here we have 2 oxygen. And here we have 4 oxygen. So 4 oxygen, 2 oxygen. Oxygen is balanced. 2 sodium, 2 sodium. So this equation is balanced. Anytime you have H2SO4 reacting with sodium hydroxide, it is usually one mole of H2SO4 reacting with two moles of sodium hydroxide to form one mole of Na2SO4 and two moles of water. So this is one mole of acid reacting with two moles of base to form one mole of salt and two moles of water. So the number of moles of acid is one. The number of moles of base is equals to. From here, we can find the concentration of the base in this famous formula. For titration, the famous formula is CAVA over CBBB is equals NA over NB. Concentration of acid and volume of acid over concentration of base times volume of base is equals number of moles of acid over number of moles of base. From here, you can choose to substitute or make concentration of base subject formula, since that is what we are looking for. If we make CB subject formula, we will simply say CA to PA times NB is equals CB BB times NA. As such, dividing here by um, VB NA and dividing here by VB NA this cancels this. Concentration of base becomes C A V A N B over V B N A. And substituting C A is 0 0.05, that is in moles per dm cube, 0.05 times V A 20 times N B 2 all over VB 25 times NA 1. This will give you 0 0.08 moles per dm cube. This is the concentration of the base. Now, this concentration is for the pure base. Because here is the interest sodium hydroxide, and what you get from calculation is the concentration of the pure substance. But look at this. The formula says percentage purity is concentration of pure substance in grams per dm cube over concentration of impure substance in grams per dm cube times 100. We've gotten the concentration of the impure substance in grams per dm cube to be 4.2 grams per dm cube. And we've gotten the concentration of the pure sodium hydroxide because that is what we are dealing with, or that is what we are looking for in moles per dm cube. We need to convert this concentration in moles per dm cube to grams per dm cube. How do you do that? Moles per dm cube is grams per dm cube over molar mass. Grams per dm cube will simply be will simply be moles per dm cube times molar mass. That is 0.08 times molar mass of sodium hydroxide. Sodium is 23, we are given. Oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is 1. So Na23, O16, plus H1, that is 40. Sodium hydroxide is 40 as molar mass. So times 40. That will give you the concentration of the base 
in grams per million feet. This will give you around 3.2 grams. Now, we've got the concentration of the pure sodium hydroxide to be 3.2 grams per million feet. That is 3.2. We've got the concentration of EPO because they gave us in terms of 600 cm uh, CMP. We have to change it to DMP. I will got 4.2 DMP. So the EPO is 4.2 DMP. 3.2 DMQ divided by 4.2 DMQ times 100, that is the percentage purity. And that should, be give, that should give you 76.2%. What if you are asked for percentage impurity? Percentage impurity will simply be 100 minus the percentage purity. That is what you will simply get. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this class. Get a flash, let us jump up and begin to play with questions. The thing is, there is no way we can solve all the questions in the world. But if you understand the topic very well, and with a touch, little touch of common sense, you'll be able to reason. When you see a question, don't just give up. Look at it. Try to solve. Start somewhere. Bring out everything you know. You'll be able to solve very, very well. And look at one secret to pass down. It's constant practice. Don't just watch the video and assume. Write out the question. Open your book. Solve separately. Solve like 20 times, 30 times, one question. Then after like two, three days, solve it again 10, 20 times. By the time you solve, solve, after studying, close the book, bring out a new rough note. Write, solve, solve, solve. Bring out everything you can remember. Keep doing that and doing that. Before your jam, you should be able to finish up to like 10 different uh, 80 leaves, or depending on the book you are using. You should be able to finish at least 10 different big books just for calculation, for trying to remember, trying to solve. When you are able to do that, you'll be able to remember in the exam hall. Nothing will make you forget anything. The fact that you forget in the hall is because you don't practice constantly. It is not witchcraft or village people or anything at all. Once you practice very well over and over again, there is no way you will forget. For example, which exam tension will make you forget one plus one? This is simply because you've used it over and over and over.